This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard. As haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost. As inevitable as a guilty conscience. The Shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, Murders in Wax. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to step inside and view the illuminating and educational exhibits that are the features of our waxwax. See Bluebeard actually slaying his eight wives. See Custer's last stand. See the capture of George Keegan, public enemy, number one. And many other threading, lifelike tableau. The price of admission is only one dime. Ten cents. Our lecture is just starting. And if you hurry, 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 you'll be just in time to witness the complete show on the inside. Step right up now. How many for the first? Uh, two, please. And uh, all right, how many of these? Gentlemen, if you'll just step over here to the next platform, I shall describe to you the details of the feature tableau of our exhibit. Say, they look like real people, don't they? Yeah, how do they make them? With wax. Gee. This tableau is a dramatic reenactment of the capture of George Keegan, the notorious gang chief of Prohibition Day. Oh, I was he was arrested in the manner shown right here. No doubt you all recognize the figures of the brave men who personally led the police squad who made the capture. On the left, the wax figure of our own Mayor Lewis. Center, our district attorney Armstrong. And right, Police Commissioner Weston. Hey, Were they really there when Keegan was caught? Sure he was. George Keegan's arrest put an end to the wave of crime and lawlessness that gripped our city for a decade. He is now imprisoned in the state penitentiary for the rest of his natural life. Gee, the girl in the tableau sure looks lifelike. Yeah. Well, ask him who she is. Okay. Hey, Cap, who's that girl? I uh, just coming to that, brother. A little lady seated in the chair was Keegan's gun mom, Edna Kelly. Oh, she was with hey. him in the hideout hey, at the time of the raid. Hey, look, look at that. Look, the wax figure fell off the chair. Uh, uh, don't get excited, folks. It's only a wax figure. I'll just set it up again and... Holy cats. It, it's real. It's, it's the body. A dead body. A dead body of Edna Kelly. Hey, it's, it's really Edna Kelly. Edna Kelly, how'd she get here? She's been murdered. Murdered! murdered. Don't pull a trifle harder on that right oar. We'll hit that rock. <laughs> All right, there we are. A little rusty on navigation, Margaret. This is my first rowboat venture in the park this spring. I'm really enjoying it. I need a little fresh air and sunshine after that experience of the waxworks yesterday. That was pretty terrible. Why don't you ever happen to go to that place, Margaret? <laughs> well, I, I was showing the town to my cousin Jane from upstate. We passed the waxworks museum and she insisted on going in. She'd never seen a chamber of horror. And she saw more horror than she bargained for. <laughs> yes, and so did I. I'll never forget it. Just what was that wax tableau like? It was set in a replica of a finished room in the house where Keegan was captured. Yes? The figures of Mayor Lewis, District Attorney Armstrong, and Police Commissioner Weston were grouped about Keegan and Edna Kelly. Did anyone notice the figure of the Kelly girl was actually she until it fell from the chair? No. The wax figures were so lifelike that no one suspected. I see. Can I roll the island? Oh, that'd be nice. Lamont, whom do you think killed Edna Kelly? Well... She was a gunman's girl, always the obvious suspects, her lover's enemies, or even members of his gang who might be more comfortable with her out of the way, but somehow I don't think it was either of these. Why, Lamont? Doesn't it strike you that the substitution of the girl's body to the waxwork in such a spectacular fashion may 
They have some deeper significance than the mere bizarre effect. Well, what do you mean? It must have been the girl's connection with the other people represented in that group that motivated the murder and bringing her body there. I don't quite understand. My deductions are correct that taking of Edna Kelly's life is only the first of a series of vengeful murders. But, Lamont, if that's true, isn't there anything you can do to forestall it? Perhaps. I only knew a little more. I only knew where the killer plans to strike next. Surely the shadow can find that out. With your help, Margot, perhaps he can. A fine bunch of detectives I've got in this department. You call yourselves a homicide squad? That's a laugh. But Commissioner Weston, we've combed this city. Hogan, have you checked on the story of the museum proprietor? Commissioner, you talked to him yourself. Have you verified his statements? Yes, Chief, they're solid. Yeah. The murderer entered the Waxworks Museum by a back door. It was found Jimmy. After he put Edna Kelly's body in a tableau, he took the wax image of her outside and buried it under some trash in the alley. Did you go over the image for fingerprints, Cardona? Yeah, but we couldn't find anything. Tell him about the face. Oh, yeah, Commissioner. Uh, funny thing, the face of the wax dummy had been sliced with a knife across the left cheek. Why didn't you tell me that before? You know what that means as well as I do. That's right. That's the mark of a squealer. Yeah, but it couldn't have been any mob stuff. The probation report shows that Edna Kelly's been going straight ever since Keegan was sent away. If you ask me, I think it was a lunatic that's done it. Yeah. No sane guy had set a dead girl's body up for exhibition in that waxworks joint. No, it, it looks to me like one of them love things. Some guy carrying a torch for Kelly. And You're those. both wrong. It was no lunatic that committed that murder. Mm. And Edna Kelly hasn't gone out with anyone since Keegan started his stretch. Then what, Chief? Edna Kelly was murdered for vengeance. By someone who wanted to settle a score with her lover, George Keegan. Keegan can't be reached in the big house, so they take it out on the girl. And what about the mark of the squealer on the face of the wax figure? That what ties it? right in. That was the murderer's way of telling Keegan what he thought of him. Keegan has saved his neck by squealing on a dozen guys. Say, that's right. Yeah. Of course it's right. Cordona, first thing in the morning, I want you and Hogan to conduct a general roundup of every known enemy of George Keegan. That won't do any good, Commissioner. Hit the shadow. Don't Where is he? Me. Don't trouble to find him. Why are you here, Shadow? To aid you in capturing the murderer of Enda Kelly. What do you know about the case? I know that you shouldn't be wasting your men's time rounding up possible suspects while the real assassin is left free to strike his next blow. Now, see here, Shadow. Don't tell me how to run my department. Hold on, Weston. I have every reason to suspect that the placing of the Kelly girl's body in the wax tableau was intended as a warning of other deaths to follow. Other deaths? You think there's going to be more killings? Be quiet, Hogan. Tell me what you mean, Shadow. I mean that the other people represented in that wax tableau are in danger of being killed, too. And they're the mayor, the district attorney, and you yourself, Commissioner Weston. That sounds preposterous. Not at all. My advice is that you act quickly. One of you may be at this moment in imminent peril. Oh, come, come, Shadow. What possible motive could the murderer of the girl have for wishing to kill us as well? I think that you're... Excuse me. Hello? Mrs. Armstrong, the district attorney's wife, wants to talk to you. Put her on. Hello? Hello? Yes, Mrs. Armstrong. This is Commissioner Weston. Oh, Commissioner, I I'm dreadfully worried about John. Uh, what's wrong? Well, shortly after dinner, he went out. Said he might take a walk. Several hours passed, and he didn't return. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. And when I woke up a few minutes ago, he still hadn't come back. Oh, this isn't like John, Commissioner. What time is it now? It's after 2 a.m. Uh, well, now, don't be alarmed, Mrs. Armstrong. He's probably detained somewhere on business. I'll try to locate him for you and call you back. Oh, thank you. District Attorney has disappeared. Disappeared? Say, Well, maybe... Commissioner Weston. You think, Shadow, that... Yes, Commissioner. I fear that the killer has struck again. It can't be. If I were you, I would go to the Waxworks Museum. At once. You may arrive in time to stop this murderer from completing his monstrous work. <laughs> Museum, Commissioner Weston. Sergeant, take some men around to guard the back door. Yes, sir. Cardona, has anyone any keys to this place? No, sir. We'll have to force the lock. All right, go to it. Okay. Oh, I'll help you. Oh, right in. Get in there. Right. Come in. Okay, all right. All right, there all right. she is. Now, where's the light switch? Never mind that. Uh, Use your flashlight. Okay. Uh, kind of scary in here, ain't it? Yeah, it gives you the creeps. Hey, what's that? Uh, where? That guy over there. Got a knife. Don't shoot, you fool. That's one of the wax dummies. Oh. Now, where is this Keegan tableau? It's right over here on the left. Oh. So that's it. Well, I guess nothing's happened yet, Chief. Doesn't look like anything's been disturbed. 
That's the wax dummy of District Attorney Armstrong sitting down on a chair. Sitting down. Hey, it seems to me his dummy was standing up the last time he was here. What? Give me a lift up on the platform, quick. Yeah, okay. uh, you think it may be this? I don't know. Flash the light over here. Good heavens. It's Armstrong. Is it really District Attorney Armstrong? Yes. Dead. Murdered. And he was brought here just like the shadow said he Yes. Just as I said, gentlemen. I'm sorry that I couldn't have warned you earlier. Who did this thing, Shadow? Do you know? Who did it? I'm not sure. But with your cooperation, Commissioner Weston, together we may bring about his downfall. How? I am positive now that either you or Mayor Lewis is the next victim marked to go. Guard yourselves well. I'll attend to that, all right. You'll hear from me soon, Commissioner. When the shadow finds out who the killer is, he will be brought to justice. I think it's quite evident now, Margaret, even to Commissioner Weston, that the killer's aim to do away with everyone concerned in that tableau. Then the mod, you... You mean the mayor, the commissioner, and Keegan? They're the only ones left. Exactly. Let me see. I should take a right turn here. Lamont, do you believe these murders are the work of a madman? Not at all. I think that whoever's behind all this is quite sane, Margot. Quite sane. What makes you say that? There's some important civic figures in that group. Their removal would be highly advantageous to a political rival. But surely political rivalry wouldn't be sufficient motive for, for these horrible crimes. I wonder... And besides the girl, Edna Kelly, how would she fit into that picture? That's what we're driving up here to find out. Uh, there's a prison now. A cheerful looking spot. I'll drive you up to the gate and let you out. I shan't go in with you. Why not? The warden, Mr. Driscoll, has never been a particular admirer of mine. A feeling which I reciprocate. Why, Lamont? Well, I had occasion to expose the graft ridden conditions in this prison a few years ago. Naturally, that didn't make me too popular with Mr. Driscoll. <laughs> here we are. Now, remember what I told you? I think so. I'm a reporter from the Daily Globe. I'm to ask for an interview with Edna Kelly's sweetheart, Keegan. And when I see him, I'll try to find out from him. Please tell me something, Mr. Keegan. The readers of the Daily Globe have sent us thousands of letters expressing their interest in your reaction to the tragic death of Miss Kelly. I ain't got nothing to say about it. Do you believe that the killing was executed by one of your enemies? I wouldn't know. You, you loved Edna Kelly, didn't you? Hey, what are you giving out with the lonely hearts column? <laughs> no. No, you see... Lay uh... off that love stuff. <laughs> but, Mr. Keegan, I, I was sent up here by my paper to get a human interest story from you. And after all, well, you, you were fond of Miss Kelly. She was your girl. My girl? Oh, no. But I... I'll always... tell you what Edna Kelly was. She was the same as any other dame. See, she was a double crosser. But I thought... Wait a minute, Wendy. Wait a minute, I... I didn't mean that. Don't write nothing like I just said there. I uh, get a little screwy sometimes when I think about what happened to you. Oh, of course. I understand. So, uh, just don't write nothing, will you? What? No. No, but... But what about this theory that she was slain by one of your enemies, Mr. Keegan? I wouldn't know. I... I tell you, Lamont, he flared up so suddenly when I asked him if he really loved her. I, I was scared to death. He called her a double-crosser, eh? Yeah, but he, he regretted it the next second. He mm. asked me to be sure and not write anything about it. It's most interesting, Margot, and thank you for your excellent work. But, but has what I told you helped you unravel any? Greatly. Well, what happens now? I think that there are many more interesting facts to be learned there at prison. Yes? This evening, the shadow shall pay a call on his old friend... Warden Driscoll. Come in. Uh, can I see you for a minute, Warden? What's the trouble, Kai? Well, it's about Keegan. Well, what about him? Well, I put him in solitary like you told me. Yes, yes. That was this morning I done that. Hey, Carrie, what are you trying to tell me? Well, um, he ain't had no food for the last three meals. So? So I was, uh, I was wondering if something should be done to make him eat. He just lays quiet on his bunk. And I thought I told you that no one was to go near Keegan's cell without my orders. Well, I thought if he wasn't eating... Harry, if you just perform your duties as guard around here and let the warden do the thinking, 
Everything will be satisfactory. Uh, yeah, sure, Warden, sure. And leave Keegan alone. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, good night, Warden. Close that door after you. Yes, sir. Fool. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, Mac. Oh, did he get away all right? Good. Yeah? Uh-huh. Well, get him back here before daylight, no matter what happens. Yeah, okay. Tell him I hope he does a good job. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, goodbye. <laughs> you seem to be quite yeah. amused, Warden Driscoll. Huh? I want to, who's that? Won't you share your little joke with me? Carrie, are you outside that door? Is that you talking? Carrie, if this is your idea of something funny... This is not Carrie. Well, who are you? I am the Shadow. The Shadow? Yes, Warden. Well, why are you here? What do you want with me? I came in when Carrie left. I overheard your phone conversation, Driscoll. It was very interesting. Really? Yes. I'm more than curious to know who you were talking about. Now, listen, Shadow. What business have you... It wouldn't have been George Keegan. Oh, now, see here. I've had enough of this. Wait, Warden. I wouldn't advise you to leave until we've finished our conversation. Well, what are you after, Shadow? I am seeking the murderer of Edna Kelly and District Attorney Armstrong. Well, why look here? Because this is where he is to be found. Who do you mean? George Keegan. Keegan? Oh, that's preposterous. How could a man in prison for the rest of his life suddenly commit two murders in a city 50 miles away? Very simple, Warden. He just go there. Are you inferring that Keegan has escaped? Oh, no. Nothing as crude as that. But if he were allowed to, shall we say, take a leave of absence for a night... Keegan has never left these buildings. Where is he now? In his cell. Oh, no, he isn't. I investigated before I came here. And his cell is empty. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. I, uh, I forgot. He's in solitary confinement. You mean his cot is stuffed with pillows to make it appear as if he were in solitary confinement? Ah, oh, that's not true. I'll tell you where George Keegan is. He's on his way to the city right now to add another link to his chain of cold-blooded murders. He's gone there with your full knowledge and consent. No, no. It would be a great political advantage for you to have the district attorney Armstrong, the Mayor Lewis, and Commissioner Weston out of the way. Wouldn't it, Warden? No, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It's an easy thing to prey upon the susceptible jealousies of a man like Keegan until you've goaded him into carrying out your evil wishes. Uh, you can never prove what you're saying. I haven't time to right now, Warden. The lives of the mayor and the commissioner at stake, unless I'm able to stop Keegan. I shall present more than enough proof necessary to implicate you to the district attorney's office in the morning. So you'd better think hard and fast, Warden Driscoll. <laughs> Both he and the mayor are in great danger. Even now, it may be too late. If they do have time to follow up my instructions, tell them that they must follow my instructions. All right, Mr. Mayor. Stay sitting at that desk and keep your back to me. I got a gun here. Don't turn around. Just listen. I'm George Keegan, remember me? You was one of the heroes that made the pinch when I was picked up. You must remember. Why, they even got a little statue of you and me down at the wax museum. Now do you know? You'd better know, Mr. Mayor. Because I'm sending you down personally to take that statue's place. Well, why don't you say something? Are you scared to talk? Where's all that fancy gab that you hand out at banquets and meetings? Come on, speak up. Come on, what's the matter with you? Speak up, will you? All right, then you'll get yours just the same. <laughs> Looks like I just brought about a special election. Now, Mr. Mayor... I'll just take this corpse of yours down to the museum and then... 
Hey. What's this? This ain't nobody. Now tell me your plans. <laughs> Who's that? Aren't you surprised to find yourself shooting at a whack dummy? Come on out in the open. Who are you? I'm right here with you. I am your shadow. Come on, can that phony talk? What are you, copper? No, just your personal nemesis, Keegan. Now I'd advise you to drop that gun. Not a chance. Close it on him, Commissioner Weston. Open your hands, Keegan. Let go of me. Let go of me. Take that gun away from him. Hey, Archie. This is your waxworks murderer, Commissioner. Thank you, Shadow. You guys ain't got nothing on me. How did you get out of jail, Keegan? I flew out the window. With the help of Warden Driscoll. Is this true? Did Driscoll aid you in these crimes? Driscoll? Driscoll wasn't in. Uh, Who's that? Ah, I see you caught him. Good work, Commissioner. Hello, Warden Driscoll. What brings you here? This man, Keegan, escaped from my prison tonight. And I learned that his purpose in leaving was to make good a threat he'd made on the life of our mayor. Hey, what is this baloney you're throwing out, Warden? You... Yeah, quiet, you... I've just learned that this isn't the first time he's got out either. A very good story, Warden. Only I think that George Keegan could tell us a different one. Shadow, you here? Yes. And I sort of expected you'd come too, Warden. What's this all about, Shadow? Perhaps Keegan can explain that to you, Commissioner. How about that? Listen, I ain't no squeal, see? But that Warden ain't telling the truth, not one bit. That's all I gotta say. Hey, Commissioner, what is this all about? Am I being placed under suspicion here in the testimony of a shadow? Just a minute, Warden. What are you holding back, Keegan? I can answer that for you, Commissioner Weston. Keegan is shielding the Warden as the real instigator of the Waxworks murder. That's a lie. He wanted you all on the way, Commissioner, so he employed Keegan as his instrument of murder. Don't listen to him. Go on, Shadow. But first, he had to give Keegan sufficient incentive to perform these crimes, so he went to work on his emotions, his jealousy. How? Oh. He told Keegan that his girl, Edna Kelly, had been double-crossing him. Right along. Keegan, this was a lie. Huh? What, do you mean she was on a level? Absolutely, Keegan. Why, Driscoll, you dirty... Hey, look out, he's got another gun. Hey, hey, don't. Hey, don't. Oh. Oh. Go on. Oh. Go on, roll in pain. Oh. Just like Edna done before she died. Oh. That's right. Oh. Try to talk. Oh. That's what she done, too. And I laughed at her. Oh. I laughed at her. Left at it, that's what I did. Take him away. Left at it. Driscoll is dead, Commissioner. Well, perhaps that's for the best. Oh, uh, Shadow, are you still there? Yes, Commissioner. I want to thank you heartily for this night's work. I seek no credit, Commissioner. However, I have a suggestion for you. What's that? If the Wax Museum decides to create a new tableau depicting this present event, it might be wise for you to arrange to be excluded from it. Give people ideas. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.